thinking about playing the flute and you're shopping around for your first instrument? Well, this video is for you. <laughs> Are you a flute teacher who's looking for instruments to recommend to their students? This could also be for you too. I got a new flute in the mail. <laughs> I'd like to give a big thank you to Fesley Music Instruments, who's partnering with me on this video to expose you all to an option for beginner flutes. I get this question all the time as a teacher. Usually students who are thinking about trying out flute lessons and they're not quite sure if they want to commit to a very large investment of a nice instrument at the very beginning. There's lots of reasons why you'll want to consider getting a beginner flute. Beginner flutes are quite inexpensive. Some frequently asked questions that I get about new instruments is how much does it cost? There's a lot of options. This flute can be purchased on Amazon for just a little more than $100 and I have a discount code in my description for those of you who might want to check this out. Another question I get is, is it worth it for me to purchase an instrument that I or my child will likely grow out of soon if they really enjoy the flute? I'm here to say yes, it is worth it. And here's why. If you are a flute student who is participating in a school music program, it's likely that your school has some sort of marching band or pet band option. This is a great opportunity for ensemble skills and for chamber music skills. Oftentimes I get questions from flute players who have their really expensive flutes and they don't want to bring them outside. This is a situation where it's very wise to have a second flute, maybe a beginner flute as a companion to your concert instrument that you can bring outside in marching band. Obviously, you always want to take care of your instruments regardless if they're being used for marching band or otherwise. But it's so nice having a backup when you need it. Another situation that I've encountered several times is that I will be performing in a concert and my flute will have a technical issue. I had a spring pop out of my keys in the middle of an orchestra concert. The flutist sitting next to me offered me her flute and I was able to play on it. But that was a situation where I wish I had had a backup. Flutes need frequent repairs at least once a year and sometimes more often, especially considering what kind of hours you're clocking in on that instrument. While your flute is getting repaired, sometimes it's nice to have a flute that can hold you over while you wait for your flute to be repaired. Not every repair can be done in a single sitting, especially if it's a time of year where many other instruments are being repaired. Back to school, after concerts, after marching band season, etc. So I would definitely recommend every flute having more than one flute in their homes and in their collection. Another option that many don't think about is what if you have a friend come over who plays the flute and you guys want to play some duets and they didn't bring their flute? Well, lucky you, you have one ready for them. I'm so excited to add this flute to my collection. All right, let's open her up here. I'll be honest, I made a short video of this unboxing first, so this is all kind of pretend. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because there were these red pegs, rubber holders under the keys to hold them in place during shipping, protecting them from the shipping trauma that it, <laughs> that it could have undergone. So if you do order this flute and you get it and you're noticing that your keys don't move, try looking for these. So here's the flute. I open it up nice and shiny. So pretty. This flute also comes with a cleaning rod, which is really nice. The flute also comes with a nice set of gloves. Wow. I don't think I've ever gotten a flute with gloves before. Look at that. <laughs> Where's my hat? I want to pull out a rabbit. I want the rabbit. And there's this nice little polishing cloth here. This cloth is made of a material that's really good for polishing. I don't see any other rags here. I would not use this to clean the inside of the flute. My flute here, I have a cleaning rag that I use. It's very, very thin material and it's getting kind of worn. Look, oh, I just love the purple, but look at that. Ah! <laughs> it's a satin type material, see? Very transparent, see-through, and easy to manipulate. Pull through your flute as you're cleaning. I have a video about that. We'll talk about cleaning too in this video. This instrument also includes a flute stand. Super nice, that is really nice. So you just unscrew it here, expand your little helicopter. Twist this on there. For those of you piccolo players out there, this is really nice to be able to hold your flute down somewhere besides your lap where it might roll off onto the floor, which is very sad. And I put my flute together like this, head joint on top, embouchure hole lined up with this first key as a review. And I'll make more beginner tutorials soon. Foot joint here, I'll put this around. And this is the trickiest part for my students when they're first learning the flute. Lots of new flutists want to line the bars up like this. There's little balls on the end of these bars. Here, the ball there, ball there. That's not how you do it actually. You want to line the ball on the foot joint lined up with this trill key here, short key right here. That's how you want to line it up on the foot joint. All right, let's give her a whirl. Ooh, I like that low register, that's nice. Okay, I'll demonstrate with something slow and then fast on this flute. Remember, if your flute is playing a little sharp, 
most flutes do, they're set a little bit sharp. You're gonna pull out the head joint. You see where the color changes here? About that much on, on many flutes. Many flutes are like this. If you have to do that, there's not necessarily anything wrong with your instrument. It's a good buffer space because it's much easier to expand the length of the instrument than to contract when it's all, all the way pushed in. One thing that's really nice about this beginner flute, it has a split E mechanism. It's this little bar here. So the E key, when it's pressed down, it gives that high register third octave E a lot of stability, which is a hard note to get out, especially if you're a new flutist. Not bad. There's another reason I thought of for flute teachers to have access to a beginning flute. Sometimes we as teachers can lose perspective. So if we can make sure that we are staying aware of what limitations a student has versus the instrument, it can keep us aligned with what we are asking them to do. Just as a comparison, I will play both of those pieces on my $18,000 instrument. What makes a flute so expensive, you might ask? Lots of instruments are made out of different material. So the beginner flutes are typically plated with a metal and professional instruments are usually made out of complete material of that metal. <laughs> For those of you who have asked, I play on a, a silver Muramatsu body DS model he heavy wall and my head joint is a David Williams 18 karat white gold head joint with a 14 karat gold lip plate and top and a platinum riser right here. And it has an engraving here of a firebird. Very beautiful. The beginner flute. You can still hear a difference in the sound, but I am able to execute all of the techniques the same. This flute will not hold you back from learning most things that you need to learn. It is perfectly sufficient as you get started. Now let's review cleaning the instrument. You wanna take your flute. I always start by taking the head joint off first and putting it into the case in this orientation with the embouchure hole facing up. Then I take my foot joint off like this, placing it in the case in this orientation right here. And then I hold my flute body while I clean it. You'll take your cleaning rod here and thread it with your thin rag. Some flutes come with those rods that have a pipe cleaner looking thing attached to it. And while they will work, I don't love them because <laughs> those pipe cleaner fibers can shed easily and get in inside of your keys. So you'll want to thread your cleaning rod and put it all the way through, twisting it as you go, pushing it all the way through the instrument. One swipe should do it unless you've been practicing for many hours and then you might have to go through two or three times. Then place your body in the case in this orientation. I then take my foot joint out, putting the rag through and twisting, just like I did with the body. And I will end with my head joint, putting the rag all the way through, twisting it until you feel a gentle stop and you don't wanna to push too hard. Twist a few times and then gently pull it out and place your flute back into its case in this orientation. I will then take the rag off and place my rod and rag back into its pocket here. If I have enough time, I will conclude with polishing all the fingerprints off. So I like to start with my head joint and I'll take the polishing cloth and gently rub across the instrument around places where it had the most contact, especially the lip plate right here. A few times should do it. Spend some time on that connection point between the head joint and the flute body and gently place it back into the case. Then I'll take my flute body and use the same rubbing motions Careful not to crush the keys. Gently rub the keys in circular motions. Always hold and maneuver the flute where there are no keys as you are applying pressure and then place it back into the flute case. And I like to end with the foot joint. You can do this in whatever order you like. This is just what I do. <laughs> da 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 da. 
There you go. Thanks for watching this video. There's not one size fits all for beginner flutes, but this is a really great option. Again, for anyone who wants to take advantage of this discount code going on for about a week, go ahead and click the link that's included in my description below. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more like this. Also, shoot me your comments on different types of tutorials you'd like to see in longer form format. Follow along for more flute pedagogy and practice tips. See you next time. Bye.